Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Stardew Valley. In the last episode, we managed to get all the way down to the very final floor in the mines. And that won us this skeleton key. I think it was actually called the skull key. And it's sitting inside our wallet yet again, next to all of our other very important treasures. So we have to figure out what we can use that key on soon. But perhaps more importantly, we've also purchased the mermaid's pendant. And this thing is very special because we can give it to the person that we want to marry. So I guess that means that Sam should be willing to accept our gift. And hopefully later today, maybe when it's not storming so much outside, we can offer that up and see what he thinks. Actually, let's go ahead and check the weather very quickly, just to see if maybe tomorrow is going to be a little bit brighter. It's going to be cloudy with gusts of wind throughout the day. So at least it shouldn't be storming. I guess that means it should be a good time for us to present our grand offering. But we did unfortunately forget about somebody's birthday yesterday, thanks to all of the commotion. So we have to go straight over to Robin's and offer her the biggest apology. I'm not even really sure what to give her. I mean, I guess we could maybe find something inside our coops or our barns. I think she usually appreciates it when we give her eggs or milk. So maybe we'll try something along those lines. Something fresh to start her day. And hopefully get ourselves back on our good side because I really want to upgrade our house again, too. I guess it's a good thing that we have all of these cranberries to sell off. I think we have plenty inside our chest, so we don't need to save too many more for the coming seasons. We'll go ahead and sell off all of the extras, and we should probably take a peek inside our greenhouse, too. Something tells me that all of those blueberries are probably ready to harvest as well, because I keep forgetting to pick those up so we haven't checked them in quite some time. Do we have enough time to grow some more of these sunflowers? They take eight days, so it looks like the season is going to change before these sunflowers grow again, which means we probably want to stuff them up here with the Daisy's things. She can guard all of our lovely sunflower seeds for our flower shock in the winter. You might want to find a bit of a more secluded place to hide, little one. The storm is definitely not the safest place to be. But let's see. Yep, just as I suspected, we have plenty of blueberries to tie us over as well. Oh my gosh. And our fruits are ready too? Oh, our very first cherries and apricots. Yes. Oh, do you think Robin might appreciate some fresh fruit then? These certainly aren't in season right now. That's why I wanted to grow all of these different trees inside our greenhouse. I can't quite remember what we planted over here, though. And it looks like this one isn't growing as well. I wonder if we planted it too close to the wall, or if maybe it just needs a little bit of extra time. But yeah, if we can figure out all of the different trees that we've already planted, we'll go ahead and buy the extras from Pierre's shop and then we'll have a whole row of fruit growing all throughout the year. Those will probably make for some pretty excellent gifts around town. Maybe we'll try giving Robin one of the cherries, and then we'll swing by Gus's place too, to see if he would like some fresh fruit. He always just seems to appreciate the fresh ingredients, because I'm sure he uses them right inside his saloon. It looks like our pigs are still babies, unfortunately. Still not ready to dig us up any truffles for our Junimos. But it can't be much longer now, right? I feel like we have had our pigs for a very, very long time now. Oh! A new baby lizard has hatched? Is this our dinosaur? Oh my gosh, I think it might be. Okay, so I wanted to name our dinosaur some sort of gem-related name, since that's what I had found right before I discovered this dinosaur egg. So one of you suggested the name Emerald, which I thought was very fitting of a dinosaur, especially if they are a green color. Where are you, little guy? Oh my gosh, you are adorable! This little dinosaur is even smaller than our chickens. 
a one-month-old dinosaur. Emerald seems curious, but a little cautious, just like many of our animals when they first visit the farm. Oh, but you seem to be getting along so very well with Chirp, one of our oldest members of Cattail Farm. So I think she'll be able to show you all the ropes. What kind of dinosaur is this? Does anybody know? I am absolutely terrible with dinosaur names, but if you have any ideas, then let me know. Little Emerald is going to make a wonderful addition. It's too bad that we can't open up the doors to let her stretch her legs. Well, we could, but I'm sure she wouldn't be very happy. But tomorrow is supposed to be much better. It'll be a little bit cloudy and a little bit windy, but at least they won't have to worry about lightning and thunder and all of that stuff. So we have some eggs to spread around the town. We have our sunflowers, our cherries, our apricots too. Plenty of little gifts to give to all the townspeople. But first things first, we are going straight up to Robin's. And you know what, Maple? I think it's about time that we changed your hat back over to this daisy, if you wouldn't mind. I think she looks much, much better with the daisy in her hair, rather than this fedora. The fedora doesn't fit her personality quite as well. I wonder if the hat mouse has anything new for us, though? Since we did get to the bottom of the mines, and that was technically an achievement, maybe the hat mouse will have a brand new type of hat that we can give to Maple instead. Something even more fitting than our matching daisy. Now fingers crossed that Robin is in her house today. There you are. Oh no, you're soaked. I'm sorry, Robin, I don't mean to track puddles all around your house, but I wanted to give you this cherry. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks, this is really nice. Okay, so at least she accepted our apology gift. Hopefully that's going to warm her up to us again, so we can take a look at your house upgrade. I can increase the size of your house and add a nursery. It'll cost 50,000 gold, and you'll also need to provide me with 150 pieces of hardwood. Are you interested? Yes, I am, Robin. Actually, I think we might have enough for all of that. I'm not 100% sure about the hardwood, but we can always go into the secret woods later to collect some more. So that's actually much more in reach than I thought it would be. Now, Demetrius, maybe you would like our other cherry? Thank you, this is a very interesting specimen. Excellent, so he can study that. We can give a sunflower tomorrow. This is a super gift, thank you. And then if Sebastian is maybe in his room, I wonder if we could offer him up a gift too? Oh, it looks like he might be out for the day. I can't imagine that he would be somewhere inside. Yeah, he must be wandering around in the town. Maybe standing by the river somewhere, just enjoying some time alone. That seems to be what Sebastian likes best. Sometimes he even stands out here too, right where Abigail goes to play her flute. But it looks like this place is relatively empty right now. Nobody's willing to tempt fate by standing out under all of these trees in the middle of a thunderstorm. Oh, and that reminds me too, we need to go see what reward we can collect from the Adventurers Guild. We finished off another one of those quests, and I think we're supposed to go to this guy? Yeah, there we go. A vampire ring. Gain a little health every time you slay a monster. Well, that sounds super helpful. That was actually from defeating enough of the bats. So if we pop that onto Jess, we'll have to figure out what we want to take off first, either our glow ring or the ring of Yoba. Well, I guess the glow ring would be the best choice for now. We probably don't need it anyways. We have our trusty torches after all if things get a little bit too dark. But the Ring of Yoba shields us from damage every now and then, which is definitely a little bit more helpful in the tougher portions of the mines. Now unfortunately I don't have those spare shoes on me for you, but we'll be back to sell those off soon. We have some extra gear that we certainly don't need anymore with our new special space boots from Mr. Key. Ah, oh, we forgot to show off our mermaid's pendant to Robin. I wanted to give her a little glimpse of what we're planning for tomorrow. 
because I'm sure she'd understand us missing her birthday if she knew how much Jess had on her mind. For that matter, this is probably something that Robin went through too. I wonder if it was Demetrius who gave her the mermaid's pendant, or if maybe she gave it to Demetrius instead. I wonder if she would have let us in on that story someday. Maybe if we get close enough. Now before we forget, let's go ahead and drop off some of these fresh apricots over at Gus's. See if hopefully he appreciates that this is a gift. Maybe you can incorporate this into your menus as well. And then I suppose we could always offer one up to Leah too, since she seems to like fresh snacks just as much. Now, one of you mentioned that the saloon is one of the places where we could potentially use our new key. So I'm curious if we can find the right locked door. There's nothing back here, right? No little hidden secrets? Ooh, what is this thing? It looks like we should be able to click it, but nothing is happening. Can we, like, put something inside? Ooh, that's strange. There's nothing else that we can interact with in this room, but that strange box has me very intrigued. Are we supposed to unlock maybe Gus's room back here? Maybe we can go through these saloon doors instead? I'm not sure if we've ever tried this before. Well, there's nothing special in this room that I can see. So, how about Gus's room back here? It looks like he has a little TV in his room. The cooking channel, of course. 24-7 cooking tips, game shows, and restaurant reviews. I would expect nothing less from Gus. He has something on his table. There's a half-empty mug of beer. Oh, looks like he didn't clean up after himself. And his bed too. Oh, jeez, don't want to go into that. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything that we can use this key on. Unless I'm missing something. There's the jukebox over here. Oh, we can actually change the music? Oh, I'm not sure if I ever saw that before. That's kind of cute. Alright, well, let's see if maybe Sam has any ideas. Rain muffles sounds so I can play my guitar louder without my mom getting mad. Oh, it'll be fun when he's living on the farm. I can see him playing his music outside while Jess is working giving her something to relax to. All right, so I guess that mystery is going to live on for now. Still not 100% sure what we're supposed to use that key on inside the saloon. I guess I'll have to do a little bit more research. The other place that you guys mentioned we should go is the desert. And honestly, I had a sneaking suspicion that that would be the case. So maybe after we've given Sam his mermaid's pendant, once we have a little bit of extra time, We'll see if we can go back to the desert, if Pam wouldn't mind taking us there yet again. Shuttling us back and forth from Stardew Valley to the Calico Desert all day long. We'll see what we can discover inside that mysterious place. There was actually a door that was locked, I believe. It was in some sort of cave. So I think I might know where to go if that is where we're supposed to be. But let's go ahead and just plop these extra eggs into our mayonnaise machines. And then we'll tuck Jess straight into bed. Oh, but first, let's see if we have enough hardwood. Oh, just barely under. Alright, so tomorrow we're going to be taking a trip to the secret woods too. Maybe we'll even run into Sam along the way. We actually found that he likes to go into the woods around this time of year. Probably to take those walks that he talks so much about. He seems to really enjoy the fall time weather, which I do too, of course. It's the perfect time to go strolling through the forest without worrying about that thick summer heat. And thankfully, it looks like the weather channel was right. It is much, much sunnier outside today. My goodness, just don't get water all over your floor, okay? Let's just take a quick peek at the fortune teller this time to see if hopefully we're going to have a spot of good luck. Oh my goodness. I don't know if we've ever seen that symbol before. The spirits are very displeased today. They will do their best to make your life difficult. Oh, I don't need to hear that on the day that I'm about to give Sam his mermaid's pendant. Oh my goodness, that's making me a little bit nervous. Hopefully he's not going to turn us down. Break Chess's heart out in the forest. Are we doing the right thing here? 
I mean, I guess there's no turning back now. We've already made the plans. We already have the pendant. We are going to give this thing a shot no matter what. Even if the spirits are against us. We've heard it straight from Wellwick herself anyways. Sometimes you have to create your own luck. Just because it's something that she predicts doesn't mean it's something that's going to come true. We have the potential to change it. Right, Daisy? <laughs> it looks like she's having a good time in the shade. She is all about going with the flow. I can't imagine she'd care what the fortune teller has to say either. Are our sheep fully grown? Ooh, they look different. They don't have their little blushy cheeks anymore. Oh, cotton ball looks fine. It looks like they're actually all grown up. So I bet we can shear them now. Oh, I wonder if that means that we have wool in here? Yes, it looks like our auto collector is doing its job for each and every last one of our animals. Now we're still just waiting on our pigs. Yeah, our pigs unfortunately are still considered babies. Oh, I wonder if they're not going to grow up in time then? Oh, that would be awful if we're just waiting on those truffles all winter long. Well, I suppose we're going to have to pay the traveling merchant some more visits in the future then. Maybe we can convince her to keep her eyes out for some good Gotoro truffles. Can you imagine how expensive they're going to be though? If those little summer spangles were that expensive, and we just needed those for the seeds? She is probably going to make us pay an arm and a leg to get our hands on some fresh truffles. But let's go ahead and finish off all of our chores. We really need another loom. We need some more pine tar for that stuff though. And I'm pretty sure that we're fresh out of pine tar. So I guess I'll have to get to work on some tappers to place in some of our trees. But first things first, now that all of our chores are taken care of, Let's go out to the secret woods. We'll have to make sure that our axe is at the ready. And I'll keep that mermaid's pendant tucked safely away as well. Just in case we happen to run into Sam along the way. I'm sure at this point he's probably still sleeping. Since he does like to get up a little bit later. But maybe once we're on our way back home, we might run into him over at Leah's. That was where we saw him last time when we were going into town. I think I'll leave you right out here, Maple. Right next to our torch. So you can guard the entrance. It is a little bit dangerous in here sometimes. Not very much since there's only the slimes to contend with. But we don't want our one and only horse getting hurt. It actually seems to be quite quiet here today. And I love how there's still these bright green glowing leaves falling from the sky. Not exactly blending in with the fall time season here, but I suppose I can't complain. This is some mystical, magical secret wood. Maybe it's something that old master Cannoli is controlling. Oh, there is one of the slimes. Hello, little guy. You are blending in very well with those bushes, despite your slimy blue appearance. I'm used to seeing the green slimes in the forest, but it looks like it's all about the blue slimes today. Luckily, they're not quite as difficult to take down as the red slimes down in the lower portions of the mines. But with our super fast sword at the ready, it doesn't seem like very much can stand in Jess's way anymore. So that's 12 more pieces of hardwood, which unfortunately isn't quite enough to get us the house upgrade. But if we come to the secret woods every day from here on out, I think we should be golden before long. So thank you very much for waiting for us, Maple. Maybe we should actually collect a few more of these trees too. I'm sure the wizard wouldn't mind us cleaning up a little bit. He does have quite a bit of debris to deal with around these parts. And there's our friend the Hat Mouse. Well, looks like we can't actually sneak you through to the Hat Mouse's door, Maple. But we'll see if there's anything special that we can buy inside his shop. So what haven't we seen yet? The mouse ears look different. Oh my gosh, that would be super cute. Maybe Jess can wear the mouse ears for a little while. I would appreciate it more if they were cat ears, of course, but we'll have to make do with what we have. 
I think the other new thing might have been the cool cap. And I can't really see Maple wearing that either. Though one of the bows might look nice on her. Maybe the butterfly bow? It looks like it's a nice red color, so it might even work for the fall time season. Let's see how you look with this thing, Maple. Oh, that is super cute. It's very, very big on her, too. I think we'll go ahead and keep that for a little while, and let's see how the mouse ears look on Jess, too. Oh my gosh, that is adorable, too. Oh, you know what would be perfect for these? We could use these to dress up on the Spirits Eve Festival since I believe that's supposed to be a little bit like Halloween, and it is coming up super, super close now. So maybe that would be a good costume for her to use. Now, I didn't see Sam on my way here, so I wonder if maybe he's at Jojamart instead. Either that, or he's probably inside his house. It could just be one of those days where he works his shift at Joja. Now, I don't really want to present him with a mermaid's pendant at Jojamart, so if he is inside, then we'll wait for him to come out. It looks like everybody is definitely heading home, though. We have Kent and Vincent. Even Jazz is on her way. I'm kind of surprised that Penny's not with them. Maybe she decided to take a rest over by the bench. Your farm looks really pretty right now. Well, thank you very much, Penny. I do appreciate that. You haven't seen Sam around here anywhere, though, have you? Yeah, I guess we should probably check Jojamar. Even Shane is going home, so they're definitely done with their shifts. Oh, that's awfully strange. I mean, Jojamar is probably closing pretty soon anyways. Yeah, he's not in here right now. So I'm guessing he must just be somewhere inside the house. Unless I missed him. Maybe he's hiding particularly well in the forest. Well, let's park ourselves right down by his door. That way we know we won't miss him today. The tables have turned. Was he not just doing the same thing for us yesterday? Maybe we should have sent him a letter so he would know that we're waiting. Oh, there he is. There's Jody too. Oh, I bet she's going to be watching from afar. Maybe listening from the door. But Sam, we have something very, very special to present you with. <laughs> I accept right away. No hesitation whatsoever. I'll set everything up. We'll have a ceremony in three days, okay? Oh my goodness. Okay, Sam. Okay, three days. So we're getting married on the 26th. Hello, Marnie. The 26th of fall. Oh my gosh, it's all happening so fast. I'm a little bit shocked. But he said he's going to set everything up. So I guess there's not too much for Jess to concern herself with. We can trust Sam on this one. And I'm sure if he needs any help, then Jody would be more than willing to lend a hand. She probably has quite a bit of experience to lend in this case. Her mermaid pendant story is another one I'd love to hear. Between her and Kent. Who do you think gave the mermaid pendant in that relationship? Between Demetrius and Robin? I would say it's probably Robin who gave him the pendant. But I'd imagine that Kent would probably be the one when it comes to Jody. Let's go ahead and sell off all of these extra goods. We have plenty of little jellies to ship away today. And we really need to go visit Clint too. We have so many geodes to crack open. Our wedding day isn't going to interfere with any other plans on the calendar, right? Surely they wouldn't let us have our wedding on the very same day as a festival. Oh, thank goodness. The Spirits Eve Festival is right after our big wedding day. And tomorrow is George's birthday, too. So we'll have to keep that in mind. I'm sure we can find some good leaks to give him. Surely I've saved a couple inside our chests. We know that's his very favorite snack, so I always like to keep a couple on hand. But the big day is nearly upon us. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!